Александр Евгеньевич, ну, вы можете да, управлять. Да, Все, можно начинать, да. Можно начинать. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the current topic is depicted to a new definition of stevocoronary disease that you recently announced a couple of years ago, the chronic coronary artery syndrome. The, the new definition of this disease is critically important to understanding uh, whether the patients are candidate for adequate treatment by surgery and some angioplastic and hybrid procedure and the medicine treatment to improve the quality of life and uh, the prolongation of lifespan. So, uh, you can see on this slide uh, the classic definitions of coronary artery disease. That is a pathological process that heart arrives by stalled arteriosclerotic plaque accumulation the epicardial arteries, which are large, as subepicardial arteries, are the best obstructive and non obstructive components. The both components are critically important to understand uh, uh, how many phenotypes of stable coronary artery syndrome exist. Coronary artery is a type of arteriosclerotic in which plug builds southern side arteries in the core blood to the heart and the some components of arteriosclerotic lesion, including the obstructive component, vasospasm, and thromboembolism, and some uh, thrombus shaking, critically important. This is a process. And the cell one, the disease can be defined as the faculty diffuse. And the, all these uh, the features uh, leads to appearance of specific phenotypes, which we have great opportunity to discuss further. So, the severity of coronary artery disease, the, this is definitions not seems to be previous, but today we absolutely know that the anatomical function in clinical, in clinical um, characteristic of the severity of CAD are different each other and then the tight team relationship between them. The autonomical subscribe by the light and the black crescent branches and the by blockades of the blood flow along the pathways can be um, uh, mediated by some plaque formation, the localization of the plaque and the volume of the lipid core in the black block and some anatomical substrate can lead to appearing some functional abnormalities, including the cancer dysfunction, the lead to uh, defect to tissue, to delivery of the blood to tissue, to oxygen, and the substrate for oxygenation. And the clinical determination of severity of coronary artery based on some criteria, including anatomical substrate of precision in the wound the plug and severity of stenosis as well and the fraction of normality including PPR and the coronary reserve and endothelial dysfunction severity and clinically determinant of this disease is associated with grading of a stable engine by specific functional classes. That the frequency of CD is very high, that the global burden of CD and the worldwide uh, we have this uh, uh, increasing level of the patient uh, suffering from CD, especially in developing countries. Epidemiologic studies they were performed recently in uh, several countries of ensure that the, some dietary and environmental factors contribute to disease, including saturated fat, cholesterol, abdominal obesity, insulin, smoking, exposure to second smoke, and other uh, risk factors, including genes, 
And uh, uh, by the way, there are some protective mechanisms that prevent the onset of CED with the combination of epidemiologic and peritone characteristic and features uh, lead to the appearance, the global CED uh, level uh, in general population. So uh, that's about mortality and morbidity. The half of the population, the first recognized symptoms include the engine of CED, uh, is myocardial infraction, regardless of uh, whether the patient prior to appearance of the clinical presentation will silent or clinically uh, significant genital half, the myocardial infraction is the first dramatic clinical situation in 30% of all patients with uh, prior myocardial infraction uh, will be died within the next one year. For individuals who are rare from record, the whole cluster term survival is uh, optionally good, but long term survival depends on some uh, corresponding to the risk factors, the CD, CD risk factors, in, and some uh, procedure that improves survival in the, the affordability of com uh, contemporary methods of improving of mortality and morbidity. Uh, individual factors of CAD onset are reported in the slide. But the high prevalence of diabetes mellitus and hypertension to diet, high stress level for excess of health care, and low affordability of contemporary method to improve survival, including cabbage, PCI, hybrid procedure, uh, possibly genetic trait that increase in danger of triglycerides, especially postprandial isolated increased level of triglycerides, especially in women with or without of diabetes mellitus. Uh, by the way, taking take into consideration that the diabetes are the most uh, powerful factor contributing to metabolic disorders, increase dramatically risk of the occurrence of CAD. The diabetes should be checked. Uh, for each patient's suspected CAD. So the diabetes, uh, second type of diabetes or type 2 diabetes mellitus is critically important for uh, allocation of the patient's group at high risk of CAD, uh, but some patients having type 1 diabetes mellitus should be taken into consideration at high risk uh, when uh, the duration of analysis of diabetes type 1 is uh, 30 years and more. Uh, so, uh, possibly decrease production of some factors that they suppress or rather constriction effect and the nitric oxide and then contrast the increased um, potential vasoconstriction constriction factors including uh, epinephrine, uh, aldosterone, angiotensin 2, and the in 1 and other active molecules are critically important to explain the appearance of the specific uh, enzyme, including microvascular enzyme. And the genetic factors can be important also, but uh, today there are no clinical recommendations that, uh, that we need to uh, check what uh, genetic factors are affected progression of CAD apart from the situation that directly or indirectly related to uh, family associated dyslipidemia, especially ultrasome uh, homozygote forms. Uh, that's why that uh, CAD can be discussed as an independent disease because of fatty streaks and prosperous of certain people of all ages, even in infant. And sometimes after avoiding eating some, avoid eating some uh, food that increase postprandial triglycerides, a low density lipoproteins, plasma level, uh, infants and adolescents, and the children, for instance, uh, the fatty sticks can disappear. The children might have cardiac ischemia due to several reasons to the period. It is the code that the bridge which uh, contain the specific muscle fiber in this compress of uh, large subepicardial arteries, especially at the increased heart rate. Uh, after age of 35 years, clinically significant CD is prevalent in men 
and at the age of 55, the, the proportion of the patient with the established CD in men in man in the female population are similar. Serious disease at the age typical result with the cocaine use, the smoking of the sport of the second hand, smokes, diabetes, and other predisposing factors should be taken into consideration to um, provide the uh, probability of the CD in the patient in several age the suspected CD occurrence. The lifetime increased CD after the age of the four years succeeded one of four people. The autopsy series revealed that 34% of men younger than 35 years old and 75% of the men older than 35 years have a clinical significant coronary region. But today, we absolutely know that critically significant region for this patient should not be uh, affect the uh, only large epicardial artery, the stomach, the vascular engine can be uh, modulated the risk of the death due to ischemic region, and we have the great opportunity to discuss about it uh, later. Uh, in the part of physiology of uh, stable coronary artery disease, the appearance of some phenotypes of this disease are the several uh, direction of pathogenetic mechanism, including the following the injury in microvascular inflammation, the platelet aggregation, and lipoprotein infiltration, the accumulation that uh, oxidizes lipoproteins in specific area that's to the intimate area of vasculature, occurrence uh, and the fellow dysfunction, the calcification and the formation of plaque, the accumulation of the calcium is plaque are powerful risk factors that identify the, the risk of uh, fixed stenosis of large epicardial arteries. The chronic total occlusion and the suddenly appear occlusion due to uh, shaping of thrombus are determined as the main factors contributing to uh, myocardial infarction, appearance, and sudden cardiac death. The both clinical situation are incorporated in the term MACE. MACE is the average uh, that uh, means uh, major uh, cardiovascular events that include uh, non fatal myocardial infarction and the fatal events, including sudden cardiovascular death. On this slide, you can see that the principal scan that illustrates that the mechanism that injury microvascular information are involved in the pathogenesis of CAD. That recently, we uh, had discussed that uh, injury of cardiomyocytes due to some reason to decrease in inflammation due to some metabolic disease, including diabetes mellitus are the only factor that contributing of information in microvasculature in patient BCD. But today, we know that uh, microvasculature are the powerful mechanism that involve the pathogenesis of CD at the early stage and mediate the endothelial dysfunction, runs it and advance, and the some mechanism that corresponding to microvascular inflammation and uh, injury of cardiac myocytes can be uh, potentially uh, controlled and resolved by the specific method. And by the way, the, the plaque formation, the plaque disruption, the thrombosis, and the fill of this function, the progression and accelerating of uh, atherosclerosis, and the other critically important mechanisms that contribute to pathogenesis. Uh, of uh, CAD are uh, based on an idea that the primary stimuli to induce accelerating of all of them are cardiac, myocardial injury and inflammation. And the ischemia is that are only the first stage of the initiating all these diseases. So, the some part of genetic mechanism that contributes to thrombosis is activating platelets. Platelets after activation can lead to several pathogenetic mechanisms from uh, oxidative modification of low density lipoproteins and the stimulating 
that accumulation of them in the specific area located within the internal zone. The two uh, stimulate glucophagic cytosis and transformation of favorable phenotypes of microphase into two potentially unfavorable phenotypes indicated as M1. This phenotype of uh, monocytes and nuclear self uh, as is associated with the uh, embarkment of uh, oxidative modified low density lipoproteins in the main uh, for all cells. The platelets the play the pivot role in the stimulation of phagocytosis by monocytes and thereby they are the trigger to uh, modify the specific phenotypes of mononucleus to from cells. That plays the key role in the formation of plaque, in disruption of plaque after uh, stimulation by several stimuli. That the capsaicin dependent apoptosis, that the activation of the cellular dysfunction, the growth of the smooth muscle of cells, the form, formation of foreign cells, and other expression of pro oxygen molecular and pro inflammatory cytokines, expression in the receptor for low oxidized, the modified due to oxidation of lipids are the short list of the process uh, that uh, can be modified by activated platelets due to ischemia in the patient suspected to CAD, the hiring atherosclerosis. So, it's critically important to know that this epidemia is established at risk factors that contribute in the acceleration of the onset of CAD due to atherosclerosis and atherosclerosis is the most common factor that contributes CAD that why the cholesterol transport, especially the genes related to abnormality of it, are considered as the pivotal tool to uh, stimulate the abnormality in the accumulation in, in the substantial accumulation of low oxidized lipoproteins, low density lipoproteins especially, and the cholesterol transport uh, are contribute to modification of uh, lipoprotein uh, delivery from hepatocytes and the transport to target level, including vasculature at the super intimal uh, zone of the heart. Uh, the previously, the Brown and Goldstein in 1976 that announced the very crystal clear hypothesis that increased the plasma level of all the low density lipoproteins is associated with some genetic abnormalities that affected the modification of receptors to LDL. They modified the sepsis due to genes reason they contribute in very severe clinical situation, neuroarthrosomic dominant hypercholesterolemia. This situation is associated with the high risk of accelerating arthrosclerosis in the poor prognosis in the patient having this abnormality. After that, in some decades, we uh, established that gene modification uh, can not only affect uh, the L receptors, by uh, genes mechanism can be involved in the several stages of pathogenesis, including any P process that the control of epigenetic regulation, the control of the so on this scheme, you can see that uh, how oxidized LDL might be involved in the initiation of atherosclerosis. Regardless of on some stimuli, correspond to appearance the increasing circulating level of LDL, uh, accumulation of oxidized LDL in the subintimal area stimulated the cell cells, the growth of smooth mouth cells and embarkment of macrophage by LDL. All these processes directly lead to oxidative modified LDL and uh, occurrence of the cold foam cells. Uh, be sure the foam cells in the term that describe that some modified mononucleus after consumption of uh, 
oxidative modified DEL, the vision process uh, can be resolved at the above self uh, modification. The residence mononuclear that allocated in a subintimate zone and the circulated monocytes can be due to inflammation. That might the inflammation, the systemic process, can lead to increased circulating monocytes that the increased number of the pool of these cells can be uh, involved in, more, in, in mechanism of the shaping of foam felt that play a pivotal role in uh, stabilization of uh, atherosclerotic plant. So, uh, from felt after a broken of LDL, the modified LDL further and the produce the oxygen free radicals that uh, affect, that influence negatively on the function of the structure of endothelial cell and the vasculature at all. So the result, we have the specific mechanism associated with the increase the load of the the lipoproteins, the accumulation sample information in the production by them, actively involved in the pathogenesis of uh, um, the injury of vasculature. The so called uh, the next stage is the shaping of the plaque and the appearance of endothelial dysfunction and the dynamic stenosis of coronary arteries. So, thereby, the endothelial dysfunction is determined at the initiated stage of the accelerating of arteriosclerosis and the final the appearance of arteriosclerosis that contribute to clinical and significant changes that the clinical relevant to CAD, coronary artery disease. Some cardiovascular risk factors including hypertension, obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes mellitus type 1, diabetes mellitus type 2, other uh, disease associated with increased the level of the oxidative stress and the systemic inflammation, including COPD, bronchial asthma, um, some joint disease, uh, autoimmune disease, can lead to endothelial dysfunction and thereby potentiate the acceleration of arteriosclerosis. So, uh, the final issue of this slide the, the large number of the patients with the high risk of acceleration arterial sclerosis due to some mechanisms beyond uh, this epidemia. So, uh, the next two slides are reported to the step-by-step -step nature evolution of coronary arterial sclerosis from initialization in the end stage of this disease. At the initial, the first stage of arterial sclerosis we have in the slide to left side, the lipid plan appearance that uh, consequently uh, transformed to subitial lipid accumulation, thickness of intermediate segment, and the accumulation of the appearance of foam cell dedicated by error on the slide. So the plaque formation associated with the appearance of the specific cap that uh, consists of uh, um, uh, the combination the fiber from elastin and the fibrinogen and the rare cell element that present with um, uh, mononucleus predominantly and the plaque formation associated with the shaping of fixed stenosis by the way that frequently the heart support overlap because of plaque formation lead directly to the period of the cell of this function then the cell of this function correspond closely with a vasoconstriction reaction due to potential vasodilated stimuli that associate this distortion of the uh, specific abnormality in the structure and the function of the zone located up and the bottom of the plate, plate place. So that the final result of the border process due to dynamic and the fixed stenosis is the occlusion. Uh, there are the specific term that they use, uh, usually use uh, our colleagues and surgeons are uh, chronic total occlusion. Chronic total occlusion is a term that describes the uh, severe stenosis of large epicardial artery more than 
and exist uh, for three months and more. So if you have the evidence of this occlusion more than three months, and the totally, uh, the total severity more than 99%, please use the specific term chronic total occlusion. In contrast, and the patient with acute myocardial infection, total occlusion can appear suddenly uh, around the plug with the mild stenosis we have been verified previously. In this case, we usually uh, use the specific term acute coronary artery occlusion in the context of the previous chronic total occlusion. Uh, to easily understand the contributing the thumb risk factors and the final result of the cardiovascular disease in uh, CAD is the more powerful risk factors. We can see the specific contributing scan at the so-called cardiometabolic risk. The cardiometabolic risk is the term that accumulates the influences on the risk of cardiovascular disease due to several causes and reason, including genetics, insulin abnormalities, overweight or obesity, abdominal lipid metabolism, smoking, uh, sedentary lifestyle, physical inactivity, other cardiovascular risk factors, including hypertension, increased serum concentration of uh, uh, uric acid, for instance, systemic and local inflammation, hypercoagulation, including the situation associated with gene abnormality, for instance, uh, five laden chromosomes, and other risks, age, race, sex, and family history. All these factors contributing to increase the cardiometabolic risk and thereby may drive the current and the progression of the cell dysfunction that lead to acceleration of atherosclerosis and increase the risk of COD at the end. Uh, consequently, uh, the common causes of the myocardial ischemia the directly lead to injury of cardiac myocytes are reduction of coronary blood flow caused by fixed dynamic epicardial stenosis and a dynamic or fixed stenosis of the small arteries in the so-called intramural arteries, abnormal constriction of the fission relaxage factors in the microvascular circulatory zone, including the resistant vessels, and the use oxygen current capacity of the blood. This clinical situation can be appeared in the patient with anemia or with thumb hemorrhage or the patient treated with a chemotherapy uh, after malignancy, for instance. The, all these factors should be taken into consideration the primary reason of cardiac ischemia and the patient suspect of, of CAD when diagnosis is not obvious. Uh, next slide to illustrate that atherosclerosis is the most common case of epicardial coronary artery stenosis. You should know that at least 50% of the patients with established um, coronary artery stenosis might have 50% of general stenosis value. These patients are not able to increase their coronary blood flow during stress to not increase my cardiac metabolic demands and thereby the experience in giant especially stable in general. But sometimes we have the severe fixed stenosis without any clinical presentations. Uh, for these clinical settings, we understand that probably collateral activity and uh, other specific uh, morphological substrate that mediate the uh, adaptive mechanisms that contributing to uh, rejuvenation of the cells are uh, existed in these patients. So the final issue is the following. Uh, the majority of patients having established CAD and stable angina really have the fixed enormous more than 50%. But 70% of all patients having stable CAD might have either combination of fixed and non-fixed dynamic stenosis with the less severity of uh, fixed stenosis, less than 50%, uh, or 
uh, isolating uh, microvascular dysfunction, and that this specific disease is named microvascular injury. Uh, that's why it's critically important to understand that the primary mechanism to the myocardial ischemia occurrence. On the slide, you can see the combination of the same process that divided the two, uh, the two groups depending on the uh, uh, diameter of arteries involved in this process. The, the epicardial coronary arteries on the left side and the coronary microvascular edge on the right side. Uh, for epicardial coronary arteries, the large epicardial artery, the atherosclerotic disease as well as spastic disease are important. Uh, the critical factors that contribute to appearance of the stable enzyme due to myocardial ischemia, predominantly due to two mechanisms. For atherosclerotic disease, due to fixed stenosis and the vasospastic disease, due to endothelial dysfunction, that uh, the, the result of the combination uh, lower activity inflammation, some metabolic substrate, insulin resistance, platelet activation, and other. As a result, we have the uh, large list of the specific clinical systems a situation starting with ischemia, acute coronary syndrome, to Prince metal angina, stable angina, and myocardial infarction. What's about patients with coronary microcirculatory disorders? Microvascular dysfunction is a case initiate the impairment of coronary physiology in the myocardial blood flow. Uh, and the patient having some cardiovascular risk factors might have the combination, the macrovascular dysfunction uh, located in uh, coronary microcirculation area and uh, accelerating atherosclerosis located in large epicardial coronary arteries. As a result of this disease, we have the wide spectrum of specific diseases, including tacot supercardial myopathy, acute myocardial infarction with the clear or near nerve coronary arteries and the uh, patient with the cold overlap. Then a uh, microvascular abstraction is a present and the near normal or normal uh, large epicardial artery arteries are presented also. Uh, recently, we used the classification of CT according to WHO and today uh, no longer used in the majority countries, including Ukraine. So, previously, the sudden cardiac death, silent scheme, engine with specific variants, myocardial infarction, Q with on non Q, post myocardial infarction, cardiac sclerosis, abnormality of rhythm conductivity, and the heart failure are now incorporated in statistical classification only. And uh, recently, we used the two specific approach. Uh, that's so called um, old fashioned, I think. And the types of coronary artery disease should be divided into two groups the chronic CAD and the acute coronary syndrome. Some countries are used this approach now. Uh, other topics of our lecture is the chronic ischemic heart disease, and the left side are critically important. Uh, according to these types of coronary heart disease, uh, stable coronary heart disease should be divided in three groups the patient having stable angina, patient having variant angina, the patient having silent myocardial ischemia. But today we have the new approach. We determine the CAD as the combination into two big conditions acute coronary syndrome and the chronic coronary syndrome. The chronic coronary syndrome should be divided into two groups uh, for patients having obstructive CAD, which uh, associated with established fixed stenosis due to atherosclerotic plaque formation. And the so called INOCA. INOCA is no obstructive at the cardiac coronary artery disease. Now, this is the common clinical syndrome, this distinct uh, underlying causes that the having. When patients having uh, a clinical sign of the 
uh, signing symptoms of stable angina, but uh, there are no uh, established fixed stenosis due to uh, atherosclerotic plaque in large epicardial uh, arteries. In the prevalence range about 50% of chronic coronary syndrome with a big percent, at least half of the patient this stable angina might have microarticular obstruction with the clear or uh, near normal large epicardial arteries after performing of invasive or non-invasive angiography. So, what key point to remember for INOCA for the patients with obstructive, uh, non-obstructive coronary arteries with angina? The most common symptoms for CAD affect the many millions of the patient globally. At least 70% from this population might have inoculum. The ischemia with non obstructive coronary arteries Please avoid excluding the rule out of the disease based on the, uh, obtaining the result of invasive coronary angiogram with clear large epicardial artery, but with the presentation of the specific, the typical clinical condition with suspected CAD, including chest panic exercise and chest discomfort exercise, for instance. Coronary microvascular dysfunction might have the similar negative impact of long-term survival when compared with the coronary artery stenosis. And the main issue of this slide is the following. Please be sure that microvascular obstruction with near normal coronary angiography and the patient having the stable effect of the cardiac artery might have a similar prognosis and similar risk of death. Okay? So, uh, the new definition, according to this new data, from the European Cardiology Society, is based on the idea that there are at least six scenarios of chronic coronary syndrome. Please be sure that only the first scenario is reported as a stable engine according to previous clinical conception. Uh, these scenarios are reflect to variability of chronic coronary syndrome clinical states and the prognosis. For instance, scenario one, the suspected CAD with angina or and dyspnea. Suspected scenario two, suspected CAD with heart failure or cardiac dysfunction. Really, some patients without typical chest pain, just discomfort might prevent the edema and the clinical science and other clinical science of cardiac dysfunction and the, the big question whether this patient can date for revascularization procedure if heart failure of cardiac dysfunction is the result of ischemia. This is the second scenario of CAD accounts. As the patient should be graded into some groups, asymptomatic and symptomatic patients with stabilized symptoms less one year after PCI, with the postponed PCI, including asymptomatic and symptomatic patients with stabilized symptoms more than a year after initial diagnosis or PCI implementation. CD with stable angina or greater spasm of the microvascular disease when large artery epicardial disease and near normal or normal clear. And the symptomatic patient in whom CD is determined at the screening. At this patient, that are not having clinical signs in, in symptoms of CAD, but according to specific correlation, uh, the risk of suspecting CAD is extremely high, more than 25% for five years. So, and the new component that incorporating these definitions in the so-called clinical likelihood of CAD. Really, at the screening, when diagnosis is not defined, you have some tool to verify whether this patient is a candidate for some invasive procedure or not, for some non-invasive procedure or not, they should be do it. 
with this patient with low risk of COD, but the patient has the uh, typical or uh, atypical symptoms or even this is silent. So, a uh, new clinical approach that we have discovered in the uh, follow-up uh, that based on idea that there are at least six scenarios of chronic coronary syndrome uh, and the separate idea that clinical likelihood of CAD which should be incorporated in preliminary report. So, uh, on the slide you can see the specific diagnostic management approach to determine CAD in the patient high different risk of uh, CAD where diagnosis is not established. So, please take into consideration that for all unstable patients, regardless of the risk, we calculate in the specific uh, classification, the online calculator in other. Uh, invasive procedures are recommended generally. For stabilized patient on the stable patient initially, you should calculate the risk of CAD. If the risk is high, you have to perform invasive procedure. If the risk is low, please refuse the performing invasive procedure and use only non-invasive procedure, including ECG, echocardiography, and uh, non-invasive coronary angiogram. So, uh, to obtain more information about the patient that risk the onset of CAD, please assess the, the number and the quality of the support risk factors. All these factors, factors should be uh, divided into two groups, modifiable and potentially unmodifiable. A potentially unmodifiable are age, male sex, and the family history, and potentially modifiable should include smoking, exposure to secondhand smoke, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, high cholesterol level, the total cholesterol including and this so critically important the increased circulating level or low density cholesterol and it decreased the high density cholesterol as isolating risk factors should be incorporated in this scheme the evaluating the risk. High triglycerides plasma level and especially post prandial increase the level of triglycerides in the subject with established diabetes should be taken into consideration also as the powerful risk factors contributing to increase the death of the patient. Abdominal obesity, sedentary lifestyle, higher hormone screen level, and even higher levels of pro inflammatory cytokines, the CO2 protein, should be determined also. So, all these discriminants are critically important to understand uh, that, uh, what kind of scenario and the worst scenario of CAD can occur on the patient and what risk will be in patient after implementation and the novel strategy to treat the patient. Our physical examination. For most patients with a stable angina, physical examination findings are normal. In the diagnostic secondary causes of angina, such as our textinosis, is critically important. And the positive Levine sign that include specific um, specific signs and the describing and the studying and the chest discomfort uh, after exercise uh, that associate with improving after intake that a need to be studying, the critically important to be refined giant at early stage. A look for physicians, signs of the pneumonia to lipid metabolism and diffuse atherosclerosis and other uh, situations associated with the involvement of pathological process, other organs, including brain. And the please be sure that the multifocal atherosclerosis can help you to provide the final diagnosis of CAD uh, in short-term period. The examination of the patient with the angina attack 
may be more fruitful, but a silent clinical situation, it seems to be not easy. So, uh, uh, according to normal clinical protocol, you have to uh, qualify the specific clinical features and conditions associated with chest pain and chest discomfort in at, at least in three classes. It's a typical angina, a typical angina, a non-angina chest pain on the cardiac gear or chest discomfort. Typical angina is a specific diagnosis uh, that requires uh, the combination of at least three characteristics: the uh, constricting discomfort at the front of the chest, this specific radiation and crucial on the arm. Are precipitated by physical exertion and relieved by rest or taking nitrates within three or five minutes. A typical engine should be determined when two and less criteria of typical, typical engine are present. Non engine test pain and discomfort require committing only one or none of these characteristics. So, that's why you have to have the specific checklist to verify whether typical angina is present and what, what the diagnosis should be considered and required for further examination. Uh, after identification patient as though having a typical angina, please qualify what uh, uh, class of the severity of this disease is present. Uh, we usually use the specific questionnaire, the named Canadian Cardiology, Canadian Cardiovascular Society grading scale. We can see on this slide that the four classes. The class one uh, is characterized in the engine, but only during stimulus and problem physical activity. Class two, slight limitation with engine, only during vigorous physical Ethical activity. Class 3 is associated with the symptoms that appear in the everyday living activity and the higher modulate limitation of the patient. In the class 4, inability to perform any activity without engine or engine address. Suppose that the patient having class 3 and class 4 are uh, stable uh, coronary artery disease and stable engine should be qualified at a high risk of their patient. That the patient with class 1 and class 2 be having the uh, more favorable clinical outcome. But please don't remember that there is no linear relation between the class of Canadian cardiovascular society grading scale and severity of stenosis when overlap is represented and the combination of stable engine with, with microvascular engine that can be manifested in the patients at engine the class 4. It's sometimes it's so difficult, it seems to be provide the clear explanation of what uh, clinical features are correspond to class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4 and the probably they have the overlap. Uh, so, uh, please be sure that there are specific clinical conditions that correspond to occurrence of untypical chest pain and discomfort. The so-called alternative diagnosis requires to be provided to initiate the specific treatment, to confirm diagnosis or rule out the diagnosis of CAD. Uh, these diagnoses include non-ischemic cardiovascular disease, including pericarditis, pulmonary disease, including pleuritis, in the pulmonary tumor embolism, gastrointestinal diseases, very frequently clinical situation associated with esophagitis and the cardiac spasm, for instance, the chest wall, the fibrosis, for instance, the herpes zoster, and the psychiatric disease at the large list that associated with the disease in the suffering of patient. This psychiatric disease can mask of angina and it's difficult to provide the final diagnosis when we have the wide range of atypical symptoms. So, uh,
Putin tinha clinical protocol e se distinguia provide the specific confirmation for conditions that the prolonged exotherapeutic ischemia. This condition can relate to cardiac disease and non-cardiac disease. Regardless of the origin of this prolonged phenomenon, the ischemia remains the powerful component that evolves clinical outcomes and the rare poor clinical prognosis in associated with the increased risk of death, including the heart failure, myocardial infarction, and sudden death. That so, uh, please um, uh, thoroughly uh, thorough the patients and to provide the sound factors that contribute to ischemia, relief them completely, and improve survival of the patients. So it's sometimes difficult to provide a differential diagnosis between stable angina versus unstable angina. Uh, what's about unstable angina? Angina at rest, the new onset angina, crescent angina, and the early post angina are typically correspond to the term unstable angina. And the stable angina can appear after previous myocardial infarction. And uh, this is example that when stable angina correspond with the risk, the onset of unstable angina in the contrast. And the patient with a stable angina without crescendo angina that had suddenly appeared myocardial infarction. At the early stage of this disease, it increased the number and the severity of chest attack can be verified and very difficult to provide what uh, the final diagnosis, what is it? It is Christian angina is a component of unstable. Or some uh, stimuli that correspond to stable angina and increase the number of chest pain and discomfort without uh, increased severity of uh, ischemia and other clinical situations. Please be sure that uh, to provide differential diagnosis of this uh, disease, you have to confirm or rule in whether ischemia might have the same severity when compared with previous condition. If yes, this angina should be quite stable. If no, please consider that any stable angina is more uh, is diagnosed with high variability. So, what's about basic testing the patient suspected CAD? According to EC clinical protocol, basic testing should include a standard lab biochemical testing, in, including lipid profile, thyroid hormone levels, estimation of GFR, cardiac troponins, and the high sensitive of all the cardiac troponins, gamblobin, blood cell count, creating in plasma level, as well as resting PCG recording. The probably some patient might. Uh, required to perform a bilateral ECG monitoring and releasing cardiography in the selected patient chest X-ray is recommended optionally. The patient's clinical history to the gauge symptoms with factors provide estimated disease likelihood before the providing some next step of diagnostic approach. It's critically important that, the, for instance, the duration. Uh, electrocardiogram recommend, is recommended generally for all patients suspected of CAD, regardless of presentation, the type of chest pain, typical or untypical. Even the patient having uh, alternative diagnosis, for instance, uh, peptic alpha with the cardiac gear, ECG is recommended to rule out the ischemia, for instance, of arrhythmia. So, ambulatory electrocardiogram monitoring today is not recommended generally, but some patients might require to be applied for performing of this method to rule out arrhythmia and the other uh, causes that induce or exacerbate myocardial ischemia. Please avoid performing ambulatory electrocardiogram method to confirm silent ischemia. Please, no need to use it. Resting echocardiogram and the cardiac visualization, including 
uh, MRI and CT scan with the gadolinium and the technetium contrast enhancement are recommended for all patients with a high risk uh, of CAD and high end ischemia. For all patients with a high risk uh, of CAD, if a cardiography is recommended generally, you should be excluded the alternative diagnosis of chest pain, chest discomfort, identified global left ventricular ejection fraction, then uh, regional wall motion abnormality, diastolic function, and other features that can help the contributing the diagnosis. The ultrasound of carotis artery should be considered for multifocal atherosclerosis, but as a method uh, to rule in diagnosis, the CAD is not recommended today. Uh, on the slide, you can see the uh, table which helps you to provide the calculation of probability uh, for CAD. The pre test probability is clinically important to verify whether the patient is candidate for some procedure, uh, invasive or non invasive. For instance, how the patient with the main age, uh, main sex, and the age 45 years old, for instance? Uh, with uh, um, a typical chest discomfort, and sometimes chest pain, you can see the 10% uh, that the pre test probability of CAD. Please be sure that the test is less than 5%. This completely exclude the CAD, not need to produce alternative diagnosis and some. Uh, approach to verify that, for instance, uh, uh, plaque accumulation in aorta. So, patient having the high risk, high risk is the equivalent of uh, 15% and very high, more than 25%. So, for all these patients, the invasive procedure is recommended generally. So, let's uh, get down to business. And the please, the atypical chest pain in the man, younger man with the age of 45, associated with 10% of probability of CED. If there's a patient by high dyspnea, the risk can increase to 12%. And if the same patients, for instance, if we have some other aggravating factors, for instance, atherosclerosis, and then on clinical signs of heart failure, the risk can increase. And the final result is associated with the combination, the pre test probability calculation, and plus aggravating factors that contribute to the progression of CAD at all. So the final result is. Uh, choosing the optimal strategy to obtain more information about your patients using uh, invasive or non-invasive procedures. So, the short list of some diagnostic tools you can see on this slide. ECG, blood ECG monitoring, exercise tolerance, stains, the hypocardiogram, Doppler, stress and the stress. Uh, some visualization procedure, including myocardial perfusion, centrograde, CRT, and MRI. Visualization procedure, including ventricular graphy, IVAS technology, and other, can be used. But uh, the optimal strategy is based on an idea that all these uh, procedures are not necessary for all patients. The choosing is based on the pre-calculation, pre-test probability of the high risk of CAD, or if patient is established CAD, have the new risk of potential fatal complication, for instance. So the final issue of this slide is if after calculation of pre-test probability of CAT, you receive the percentage less than 5%. Please avoid uh, recommendation 
uh, avoid being recommendation to use uh, invasive strategy. In contrast, when test attention is more than 15%, please use invasive strategy to verify whether CAD is present. So, uh, what uh, method can help you to clearly understand whether your patient is a high risk individual with uh, established CAD? On this slide, we can see the list of some methods exercise ECG, spec of the pet perfusion imaging, stress of cardiography, uh, cardiac MRI coronary CT scan in invasive function test. Please be sure that exercise ECG is not recommended for all patients suspected CAD. First, we have to visualize with non-invasive angiography that the plaque formation of present that is informed the critical stenosis. And after that, you can confirm the ischemia if other methods of visualization are non-conclusive. The spectrum of the PET perfusion imagine can help you to verify the ischemia in myocardium and ruling that ischemia is present, the patient really has uh, CAD. The coronary CT and ICA are recommended generally for three vessel disease with proximal stenosis. All these candidates should be pre-screened with non-invasive manipulation with the name non-invasive contrast and hand angiography. So, that's why the final issue is each patient should be pre-screened with pre-calculation with the probability CAD and the calculation of the number of risk contributing factors and say that the risk of the death the short period. Independent of all these criteria, please choose more optimal methods with the father, providing diagnostic tool to clearly understand uh, whether your patient required to be treated with invasive strategy or you have to limit your fraud with medicine and lifestyle modification. So, uh, on this slide, you see the so-called decision three for stable and giant patient. At the first stage, you should qualify whether angina is present. If yes, please document X scale. If yes, please say that the severity is a schema required to be treated with invasive strategy. If yes, perform it. So this is decision three is critically important as the treatment algorithm for the patient having established uh, chronic coronary disease. Uh, what's about in local? If the patient is non-obstructive component, in general, without obstructive coronary artery disease, the common, and the 70% of patients might have it. And these patients are at elevated risk for cardiovascular events. In even clear coronary, ang coronary angiogram with the providing by invasive manipulation and not corresponded to increase the risk because the microvascular abnormality can mm, increase the risk also. So, for all patients suspected to INOCA, please use the specific treatment protocol. Uh, step one patient evaluation according to contemporary protocol. Step two, non-invasive evaluation, functional stress test, plus coronary CT and geography. If you have the confirmation that non-obstructive coronary artery is present, please perform invasive strategy and after that verify the phenotype of INOCA associated with epicardial with spastic engine, microvascular engine, and overlap the combination epicardial vasospastic engine and microvascular engine. As a result of this uh, diagnostic approach, please 
choose the optimal management of IMOCA, the lifestyle modification, risk factor management, and antiannual modification and the treatment. On this slide, the consequently some slides, you can see the example of angiography and advertisation procedure resulted for other patients. So, on the slide, we can see the traditional, the conventional X-ray angiography, in which you can see that uh, contrast enhancement large artery only, without uh, the specific visualization to small coronary artery. So, the uh, critical limitation of this method is uh, visualization of large coronary artery only. In the next slide, we can see uh, that the result of non-invasive MRI with full deep reconstruction to help us to identify the other causes of ischemia, for instance, vasculitis, including vasculitis Kawasaki, and the aneurysm and the other disease that can correspond at the secondary reason, the secondary causes of CAD. Uh, prior to surgical dissolving, including the situation with confirmed ischemia, 3D reconstruction of MRI enhancement can help us to identify whether hybrid procedures are needed. Uh, this result can be obtained after performing the 3D reconstruction with the MRI with gadolinium test. And we have the combination parameter that uh, uh, anatomic substrate uh, plus functional serve of myocardial and conformation of severity of ischemia and the variability of myocardium can be verified also. The contrast multi detector of CLT can help us to verify whether the ischemia is still into the, the uh, fibrotic process, for instance. On this slide, we have the uh, transformation, the design of myocardial injury due to ischemia to uh, fibrosome at the end stage of nature evolution of myocardial infraction. Critically important because the uh, uh, revascularization procedure with the opening related arteries that can help us to uh, modify the hibernated myocardium to half myocardium. For this clinical situation is absolutely impossible. That prior to performing uh, revascularization procedure and the main decision regarding it place to use the count of matter detector or CRT to identify that the patient is a candidate for revascularization effectively. Exercise stressed echocardiography test can help us to verify that the kinetic abnormality appears at exercise in situation when at rest they are missed. On the slide, we have the apical zone that have the contractility dysfunction is stimulated by exercise stress test uh, during performing echocardiography. Please be sure that exercise stress test is now recommended option for patients without conclusive uh, report from traditional echocardiography. So, on uh, the next slide, you can see that the uh, specific angiogram uh, obtained for obtained after performance this called IVOS technology intervascular ultrasound. This is critically important for our colleagues who perform PCI because uh, covalent tomography and the IVOS technology can allow uh, us to obtain more information about the quality of replacement uh, the, the stent at the specific place and the improve the location, uh, go on and go on. So, uh, the more over that IVOS technology can help us to verify whether some complication of the PCI are present inside, such as a dissection of uh, stent, for instance, in the substent and the vascular thrombosis. So, and uh, optical coherence tomography, and the next method can uh, correspond to balloon angioplasty and help us to verify where the angioplasty is effectively provided. 
Uh, none of these technology, these measurements of FFR, for instance, that the flow reserve can help us to verify what uh, stenosis should be treated immediately and other stenosis should be uh, refused to treatment, treatment should be refused. And sometimes these techniques can improve uh, the result of the PCI and uh, improve and actually spend our time in this procedure. So, uh, in the next slide, the some uh, protocol for exercise tolerance test, the, the name the deducted new score. It's critically important to calculate the patient that they have an incomplete confirmation of ischemia presentation, the plain with some method for visualization. For this case, please don't forget about the treadmill score test and the calculate the specific treadmill score index. The low intermediate the high risk index is closed as shared in one year mortality rate, and you should incorporate this fact in your diagnosis. So, uh, we have 20 minutes to discuss the the treatment procedure on the patient with this established CAD. Please, Take into consideration the pay attention to the two aims of the treatment of CAD. The first aim is determined as improve uh, prognosis and the decrease mortality. And the second aim is uh, minimize and abolish symptoms and improve quality of life and the social depression, the patient having established CAD. Both the aims are critically important for patients, but please don't forget that improved survival and decrease the risk of the death due to cardiovascular and the all cause uh, and the all causes the critically important for the patients. Uh, first of all, please uh, provide some recommendation for lifestyle modification between complex smoking cessation, health diet physical activity, health rate, and the other. The smoking cessation health diet is a very simple clinical recommendation, and I want to show you the, some recommendation for health diet, for instance. They increase consumption of the fruits and vegetables, more consumption of nuts and serving of fish per week, one or two times, limited lean meat, exaggerated fats to account for less, then 10% of total energy intake and other recommendations can help your patient to uh, completely modify the lifestyle and improve survival without treatment. But to initiate the treatment of the poor patients, uh, for, for all patients, you have to know the specific mnemonic algorithm, it's very easy to use. The initial treatment engine is based on the idea of the sum uh, treatment strategy might uh, improve survival and relieve symptoms. Uh, for initialization of the protocol, please remember A, B, C, D, F, G, H, and more. Uh, a is uh, uh, aspirin and animal therapy, B, beta blocker used in blood pressure. Uh, drugs prescription, low blood pressure drug prescription, C is complete cigarette smoking and cause the lowering drug prescription. D is the diet and the treatment of diabetes type 1, diabetes type 2, and D is the providing some recommendation for exercise increasing in education for a patient population. So, uh, prior to uh, widening the discussion for pharmacological therapy of COD, we should that some of the drugs can improve survival and uh, not all of them can improve symptoms. And in contrast, some uh, drugs, including nitroglycerin, can improve symptoms but not improve survival of the patient. So, according to contemporary clinical protocol, the patient with establishing CED, the high and high risk of death. I have to prescribe antithrombotic drugs and antiplatelets. The aspirin vital daily dosage between 75 to 150 milligrams daily are recommended generally for operation who not having traditional complication for aspirin. Aspirin 
Recent clinical trials have shown to improve survival and decrease the risk of death, including recurrent cardiovascular events and the risk of atrial thrombotic complications. Statin therapy are uh, recommended generally for all patients high established CAD and or having dyslipidemia. Uh, no need to avoid prescribing uh, statins in the patient with CAD without severe abnormality of lipid profile. Please be sure that statin can improve the survival of the patient with established CAT even without improving, critically improving uh, of uh, lipid profile. Moreover, some patients with uh, minimal lipid profile might have great benefit after prescription of statins, uh, for instance, improve survival and degrade the risk of rehospitalization and myocardial infarction, occurrence of other cardiovascular events, and so the statin should be prescribed immediately after verification of the diagnosis of CAD. Moreover, if the patient high condition clinical condition named dyslipidemia, please check that the target level of low density lipoprotein has been evaluated and is reached. If the difference between uh, fat level of the patients of LDL and the target level of LDL, for uh, I remember you that uh, the level of LDL patient with established CAD at the higher risk should be less than 1.8. So uh, generally, the statin in high dosage, for instance, atrovastatin 80 milligrams, atrovastatin 40 milligrams daily. The both uh, can be used uh, if, after prescription of these statins, uh, you cannot it, reach the uh, target level of LDL. Please add as a timide, and in three months you have to recheck whether the patient has a uh, target level of LDL. If no, please add next component, ITPC is K9 and Aliracumab is recommended generally. And so called today, we have the very clear, the crystal clear strategy to improve both survival plus this epidemic and the patient with uh, high risk of CAD. Statin plus azotimibe plus anti-PCSK9. So, what's about AC inhibitors? AC inhibitors are recommended generally in the patient having CAD, even without arterial hypertension, to improve survival and decrease the risk of the death and the newly uh, run set of heart failure. If your patient is not tolerant to a CT therapy, please switch on to uh, ARP therapy. No need to combine AC and ARPs uh, to avoid uh, appearing the high risk of kidney dysfunction. Beta blockers in the patient uh, after myocardial infarction or patient with heart failure with reduced left ventricular ejection fraction should be immediately prescribed because the recent clinical trial show that uh, this approach the improved survival and decline the risk of uh, readmittance to the hospital. For uh, patients who is in for patients who are intolerant to uh, uh, aspirin, you have to switch the therapy aspirin to clopidogrel. By the way, it's sometimes not easy to seems to be because uh, that uh, Choosing and the prescription of some drugs, antiplatelet drugs, uh, tackled with uh, the postponed strategy. For instance, uh, for patients who has uh, for patients who have uh, 
um, indication to some PCI procedure or cabbage procedure, clopidogrel should never have been prescribed, but please change it to ticagrel, for instance, or presogrel. And the, after PCI, the presogrel or ticagrel should be prescribed because there have some benefits even compared to aspirin or clopidogrel. Uh, what's about shot 18 meter glycerin for acute symptoms? Uh, shot uh, active meter glycerin uh, is recommended optionally to relief, but if you use the combination anti endocrine drugs, including beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and add uh, antiplatelets, statins, plus nicorandil, plus other drugs if need. Uh, I think that shot active nitroglycerin aiding to this treatment scheme won't be uh, concisive. Um, and sometimes we have great opportunity to calculate whether the patient is treating adequately based on the calculation of the number of additionally used the tops of nitroglycerin. So, uh, calcium channel blockers can be added to the treatment scheme. Uh, to relieve chest pain and improve uh, survival and acting great chest discomfort. Especially critically important patients who have uh, microvascular angina or overlap in a combination of stable angina or microvascular angina with a spastic angina, in including the patients who have uh, microvascular obstruction due to previous myocardial infarction. So, uh, let's miss these slides. So, the final result uh, of our consideration is the treatment scheme uh, which provided by the expert of European Cardiology Society. Please recognize that initial combination of at least two anti antiandial drugs are critically important. No need to add further component to dual therapy. We usually use one or both beta blockers of cancer channel blockers at the initiating stage in the treatment. The patient is established at CAD. After that, please add next component, the nicorandine or ranolazine or trimetazidine. Uh, metabolic active drugs, including ranolazine and trimetazidine, are recommended generally. But at the uh, fourth step of the treatment, no need to initiate the treatment of the patient having stable coronary artery disease or dyspnoia uh, with the metabolic active drugs. And uh, please use uh, dual therapy of anti antiandinal drugs. So, uh, other question is regarding the treatment options for dual antithrombotic therapy. It's critically important because some patients uh, were admitted to the hospital after performing procedure and having some risk to new maces, new uh, events, and especially uh, antithrombotic events. For this case, please use aspirin plus one drug, for instance, aspirin plus clopidogrel, aspirin plus rivaroxaban, or aspirin plus ticagrelor. The choice of these drugs is based on an idea that some procedure can influence on the treatment of the drugs. For instance, if the patient uh, has uh, the risk of recurrent thrombotic events and the previously had the PCI, ticagrelor, or presagel added to aspirin can be critically important. For patients to require to be treated with the cabbage at the postponed procedure, clopidogrel adding to aspirin can be more effective. And the rivaroxaban can be added to uh, clopidogrel in the combination with aspirin and the triple therapy and the patient having atrial fibrillation then the strategy to control of heart rate uh, is being provided. 
So, uh, there is some difference on the treatment strategy for asymptomatic patients and the symptomatic patients. The number of drugs that we used in the asymptomatic and symptomatic are different. For the patient having symptoms, we should add to content clinical protocol, including case inhibitors, aspirins, statins, and the metabolic active drugs, some anti anginal drugs, and the beta blockers, for instance. For, for asymptomatic drugs, please limit your force to prescription in the sun drugs that improve survival only when relevant. So, that the, a difference in diagnostic procedure can be appeared for symptomatic and asymptomatic patients. For instance, in the patient who has some symptoms after his, uh, verification of CAD, Angiographic, invasive angiographic procedure with FFR test is recommended generally. For asymptomatic patients who not have uh, typical chest pain and chest discomfort, uh, invasive procedures are not recommended. At the end of my lecture, please uh, recognize that very practically useful uh, algorithm to choose what kind of step-by-step -step therapy should be used in the patient with overlap, for instance, the example. The concept of statin and AC inhibitors is the basic therapy that applied for all asymptomatic patients. So, next situation is uh, depicted to the presentation to the sun, uh, clinical presentation of the vasospastic angina and microvascular angina. If uh, Rhizospastic congenital is a present that please use the calcium channel blockers at the first component, and then nitrates can be added, and then you can deal the switch at the add-on therapy, and so called the triple anti anginal therapy, adding to uh, some drug that improves survival should be used. Uh, in contrast, microvascular angina is required to be treated with the combination beta blockers with calcium channel blockers. And additionally, you can use the Harrier Ranovazine on Micorandil in the both or both uh, so this treatment scheme. And the final result is a combination, should be achieved the combination with the statin inhibitors and anti anginal drugs, plus metabolic active drugs and Micorandil if microvascular angina is present. So, at the end of my lecture, please uh, identify that. Uh, some patients with uh, established angina should be firstly divided in groups and the risk and the pre-calculation of this is critically important. After that, the phenotype of angina should be verified. Stable angina, microvascular angina, micro and spastic angina because of their specific drugs that can improve survival of the patient with several phenotypes of the giant, and to be sure that our strategy is based on the combination of the force of some specialist in this field and the specialist in the uh, invasive cardiology, cardiology, GP, and other. So, uh, thank you for your attention, and our lecture is over. Александр Викторович, я все. Александр Викторович. Да, да, да. Да, все, время вышло, да. Ага. Все, мы тогда заканчиваем. Что-то я уйду.